need you, I need everybody else to pull up the book of Romans <laughs> chapter 5. Okay. Book of Romans chapter 5. Uh, a little bit. <laughs> and we're going to be starting on what you have numbered as your page 42. <clears throat> but the scripture we've been studying out, guys, and uh, we'll get through it. This morning, and then uh, hopefully hit verses 3 through 5 here in a bit. But I want you to read for us, Brother Tim, in just a couple minutes, uh, Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, but not yet. Do you have a Bible? Yeah. And you do need a sheet. Hard to be a reader leader without a sheet. If you're missing page 42, guys, Samuel, Massey, are you here? Olga, come here. Please, dear. That's right, you can do it. Take these. Rich needs one. Guys, if you need a, a Sunday school paper, we're on page 42. Lift your hand and Miss Olga will get one to you. While she's passing that out, I've got a couple quick announcements to announce to you guys. We've got early voting from October 23rd through November 3rd. Election day is November 7th. We've got these um, early voter guides, and this is from the Taylor County GOP's office, okay? But there's a QR code on the bottom. How many of you do not know how to use a QR code? All right, so a couple of y'all. So what you do is your telephone has a camera inside of it. You open up the camera and you point it as if you're going to take a picture of the QR code. And as soon as it focuses on a QR code, a website address pops up and you click it. It's just a fast way to get you to their website. You follow me? So the QR code, what I'd like you all to do is you research it out on your own. And then um, this is the suggested voting here. But then research it out on your own how you should vote, okay? I always tell people, you know, just take an extra few minutes and read, it, read through it yourself. Everybody understand? Because we, we, I don't want to tell people how to vote. I want you guys to vote because you have common sense. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and they are convenient. Listen, some of these folks, they're getting super tricky at writing these amendments to trick people. And sometimes believers go in and say, wow, that sounds great, and it's terrible, okay? So research it out. So pick one of these up. These are on the little tables next to your calendar. We've got new calendars out for the month of November. Please pick one of those out as well, okay? Next week, the ladies are going on a women's conference. We are going to be missing like 20 of our ladies, and... Um, I hope we survive, <laughs> amen, <laughs> so they do a lot. They are a blessing, a blessing, a blessing. No. Well, they might. <laughs> we'll let the Holy Spirit be their chaperone, <laughs> amen. <laughs> so, uh, listen, next thing and last thing that I've got for y'all, um, as far as announcement-wise, I had a pen, theoretically, Anybody have a pen I could borrow? It's disappeared. Thank you. So listen, starting the 29th of November, which is the last Wednesday in November. Carl, Kathy, y'all come sit up here with me. Come here. I'm going to introduce y'all anyway. Oh, they're sitting with you. All right, Mama, sorry. <laughs> Once she's up here singing during worship, y'all come sit with me down front. So, uh, well, shoot. Carl, Kathy, this is Carl, Pastor Carl Jones, his wife, Kathy. Stand up, Carl. Don't be shy. He is a Messianic rabbi from uh, San Antonio, and uh, he and his wife have been ministering out there for 17 years. 
they're looking at, Lord willing, moving here at the first of the year and coming on board as a staff member here at the church as one of my assistant pastors. And uh, he's going to be not just overseeing Tikva, but he sings, he plays guitar, plays keyboard, plays, tr uh, like, what is it? Bass, plays electric guitar, plays 12-string guitar, plays, is that oboe? Trombone, plays trombone, uh, plays a lot of instruments. No, not all at the same time. <laughs> but uh, more importantly, is a man of God and a man of prayer. And he and his wife have been my friends for over 30 years. Um, his wife came to my first church when she was 19 years old, there in Round Rock. And then uh, Carl came uh, hunting after her shortly thereafter. <laughs> and then uh, I had the pleasure of marrying them. They were actually, uh, eventually became youth pastors. They're at New Hearts and my assistant pastor out there as well. And uh, just a blessing. And so it's kind of neat how the Holy Spirit works everything out all these years later to uh, work, work it out where they'll be able to come be a part. So uh, like I said, Carl spoke Friday night, did a great job, and uh, I think you guys really going get to get to like him and enjoy him as well. Um, so last but not least, November 29th, which is the last Wednesday. Everybody say last Wednesday. Last Wednesday in November, we're starting with our new renewal classes. Now, for those of you who have not been, our renewal classes are three separate classes. They last for an hour and ten minutes. We're really good at doing our time uh, because we know you've got children to put at home to get ready for bed, blah, blah, blah. But uh, it's an opportunity for you to really grow. There, there's three classes. Um, there's... The SOAR class taught by Brian Holloman, Foundations class taught by Miss Amy, and Freedom class taught by me. The Foundations class is the foundations of our Christianity. It is solid doctrine. And uh, I wrote through the curriculum myself, and Miss Amy does an amazing job teaching it. Heard nothing but great, great, great things. And um, it's solid, solid, solid stuff. And um, then the SOAR class, Pastor, uh, I mean, uh, Brian Holloman um, has been teaching through that. That's based on a lot of material from Dr. Cloud, okay? And um, Dr. Cloud is just uh, an amazing man at bringing forth healing for people with emotional, <laughs> mental, past problems, past issues, whatever. So how many of you know God's desire is for us to be whole, amen? Yes. Whole. And there are believers who sit in church their whole life and never get whole. And Jesus wants us whole. And once you're whole, body, soul, and spirit, or at least soul and spirit, amen, then you can really minister health to other people. Amen, really minister health. And then my class, Freedom class, uh, this could be my last time teaching through the Bait of Satan by John Bevere. And it's been an amazing class about uh, forgiveness forgiveness. And uh, you might say, well, I understand forgiveness, but you'd be amazed how much you don't understand. And I say that because this is going to be like my fourth time going through it, my third time teaching it, and every time I get some nuance that helps me. It's something that once you retain it, it'll be with you the rest of your life, and it really will help your walk with God. Matter of fact, I was amazed like over half the class re-signed up to go through it a second time, simply because they got so much out of it, and they want it to really stick. So uh, anyway, what I'm going to do at this time is, Pastor Jeremy, if you come on up here. This is for Renewal Wednesday. So if you have not signed up for one of the classes and would like to, I need you to lift your hand, and Pastor Jeremy will come see you. <clears throat> I really would like to see all you guys in a class, um, unless you're just, like, so busy. <clears throat> It's an opportunity to fellowship, to hear the Word of God. And how many of you know, if you get a little bit of the Word of God in you in the middle of the week, it helps your week go better anyway. Amen? Just does. Just does. All right. That's it for me. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. We love you. We thank you, King Jesus for grace, for mercy, for faith, for the power, for the anointing, for the presence of your Holy Spirit. 
to work in our hearts, our lives, our church family, Lord, our city, our country, our world. Father, we yield our soul, our spirit, our mind to you, Father. Give us hearing ears, seeing eyes, and a heart to ponder and understand your word this morning, Father. As we grow in grace, as we continue through the book of Romans, Father, understanding, Lord God, your word to further our relationship, to deepen our relationship with you. Precious Father, in Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen, amen and amen. So what I want to do is I want to start off with Brother Tim. Anybody else need renewal class sign up this morning? Okay. If you, yes. Televised could be foundations class, Miss Amy's this time. So we're going to record it and televise it. Yep. Thank you, brother. So, uh, Brother Tim, if you'd be, Tim's our reader leader today. If you'd read for us Romans chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, which are two scriptures we've been teaching on. <clears throat> Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we, ha we also have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we celebrate in hope of the glory of God. Okay, read it one more time. Therefore, having been justified by faith. We talked about justified by faith. How many of you remember a really simple little thing? Just as if I'd never sinned, right? Justified by faith, we have what? Why did we say we need peace with God? Because we said all the world is at enmity, at war, because the sinful nature of man with God. And God has brought shalom, has brought peace to our lives through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? So we have peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, then read verse 2 for us again, Tim. Through whom we also have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. So we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So we've been talking about grace. We've said that grace, now I know it's been, um, well, it's been a week since I taught Sunday school, but I know that... Uh, we talked about grace not being an umbrella, right? A lot of people think of grace as something you stand under. And unfortunately, people with a bad understanding of the grace of God think it's something you can stand under and just live how you want, do how you want, live evil ways because you're under God's grace. That is not what the scripture teaches, amen? So the grace of God is not an umbrella, but the grace of God, we said, is a schoolmaster, because the scripture teaches us that it's the grace of God that teaches us to say no to what? Say no to ungodliness. Amen? To say no to ungodliness. So the grace of God is the power of the Holy Spirit at work in our life that will lead us to that place of saying no to sin. And this goes back really to the first part of Romans, right? Where we talked about the difference between law and spirit, right? We said that Nobody is saved by the deeds of the law. But the law is still in effect. If there were no law, there would be no sin, right? Because how can you get a speeding ticket for doing 35 miles per hour, Thomas, if there's not a speed sign that says 35 miles per hour on that road, right? I mean, you're 30 miles per hour. Huh? I found that one out the hard Yeah, you found that one out the hard <laughs> A lot of us have, brother. So... Forget the 632 Levitical laws. Let's just talk about the Ten Commandments again for a second. And they're still in effect, right? If you lie, you are a lawbreaker. That is a sin against God. So we said that nobody is saved by keeping the Ten Commandments. Because nobody can keep all the Ten Commandments their entire life perfectly without sinning at least what? Once. Amen. And all have sinned and all have fallen short of what? the glory of God, right? And yet, the flip side of that is we're saved by faith through grace in the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. But after you become a believer, now God takes the law, and where does he write it? In our hearts. So it should be by nature we begin to 
walk and live after the law. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're a believer, you shouldn't be lying, stealing, cheating, robbing, or committing adultery. Amen? <clears throat> shouldn't be blaspheming or taking God's name in vain, right? All those things. Um, <clears throat> so that's a little review. So I want to start on page 42. I'm going to put that up because that was my scripture there. Page 42, and we're on a relational aspect. And Brother Tim, if you would read that for us. Everybody see relational aspect in the middle of page 42? Okay. If you don't have page 42, Olga will provide you one with one. Go ahead, Brother. Uh, five, relational aspect. Grace isn't a thing. Everybody say grace isn't a thing. How many of you remember school? What did we used to call grace? I mean, what we used to call things, excuse me. <laughs> Called them nouns, right? And verbs, what were verbs? Action word. Now, I don't know if that's Old English or New English. Do they still have that as kind of the definitions nowadays? Whew. Good. They've changed everything else. I thought maybe they uh, flipped things. So, yeah, New English, like new math. So, verbs are action words, right? Nouns were things. Grace is not a noun. Remember? Now, that's important, again, to remember. It's not an umbrella that you're living under. So let's find out not just what it's not. Let's find out what it is. Keep going, Brother Tim. It's more like God's relational stance toward us. What do you think I mean by that, Tim? God's relational stance towards us. He's favorable towards us. His favor towards us? How many of you think God has favor for his people? Amen. Amen. Now, the typical definition of God's grace is unmerited favor, which it is unmerited, undeserved favor. None of us, not a one of us, deserve Jesus to die for us and to be raised for a day. Am I in agreement? It won because, <laughs> man, who can I pick on? Cecil. It's not because <laughs> Cecil's such an awesome, amazing person, Jesus said. I'm just going to die for him because he deserved it. None of us deserved it. Amen. So when we're speaking of literally a relational stance, we're talking about God's love for us that was undeserved, unmerited, nothing you could do to earn it. Amen. Nothing you can do to earn it. Now, how does that help us now? How many of you know that if there's nothing you can do to earn it, it kind of like gives you the ability to just kind of walk in his grace and walk in his love. You're not trying to earn God's approval all the time, right? We want him to approve of us, but it's not like you're trying to earn or work for his grace. Does that make sense? Okay, keep going. God gives us grace not because we are good enough to deserve it, but because he is good enough to give it freely. Good enough to give it freely, amen? So when I think of God's grace, the best way I think of it is in terms of Jesus' crucifixion for us. Because to me, that was the ultimate giving of grace to the body of Christ. Am I right? And it was totally undeserved. Again, it was not because any of us deserved it or were worthy of it. Right? There were none that sought God. No, not one, the scripture says. None righteous. And yet God's love. So when I tie in God's grace, you know what I always see attached to it? It's his love. Everybody say his love. How many of you enjoyed Pastor Tom last week? Last weekend, amen? So, you know, listen. Tom's been, Pastor Tom's been a, um, you know, a uh, Bible teacher in seminaries. You know, he could teach the scripture with the best of them. But if you noticed, he didn't do that. I'm not saying it was wrong they didn't do that or right. I'm just saying his ministry that God's given to him now is very relational. He's trying to challenge people to learn to see how God sees them, to free them up, to walk in an intimacy with the Father every day that they haven't been. Amen? And if you heard his testimony, he was in the ministry for like 25 years before that became a revelation in his own life. So you can do all the right stuff and still be minus and absent of prayer, absent of, you know, Papa God. 
he's with you, but it's not like it's this divine relationship of you and Papa throughout the day. So I really loved that. I really enjoyed that. I thought it would help all of us as we went through his teaching. Amen? So I say all that to say, in this teaching today, I still want you to consider that the grace of God is tied in with the love of God. They're inseparable. Now, I'm teaching them a little bit separately to help us understand what grace is, but you cannot separate grace from the love of God. Do you understand? They're like so interwoven and so intertwined that it's impossible. So for my life, and how many of you know we're right around the corner from Thanksgiving, right? How many of you know we should be celebrating Thanksgiving how often as believers? Everybody say every day. Every day. Look at your neighbor, say every day. every day. Every day. We of all people have much to be thankful for. Amen. So when I think and when I consider Thanksgiving in my life, I consider the love and the grace of God that God's bestowed on my life unmerited, undeserved, not because Bruce was worthy, but because he made the choice to love me. Now, I'm using me. You've got to use you as that example. B.B.? That was the love of God, brother. That's right. Well said, B.B. And B.B. just turned 91 last weekend. When you get 91, you've got permission to say a lot. Amen. We better listen. <laughs> love you, B.B. All right. Keep going. Where are we at? Relational aspect. Keep going, Tim. Mm -hmm. And his abounding love toward us is evidenced by this extending his grace to us. So his abounding love toward us is evidenced by his extension of grace to your life. Amen? Have you ever run across people, maybe even believers, who say, well, I'm not sure that God really loves me. There's a lot of believers that are saved, but they really aren't understanding that God loves them. And so here, listen, with this part here, I think it helps us when we understand that God's love is evidenced by his grace. If God didn't love you and I, there would be no grace to be saved. There would be no Jesus. Amen? How did God prove his love to mankind? Say, somebody over here. Who said it? Sheila Louder? Died on the cross for us. So, for God so loved the world, John 3, 16, that he gave his only what? So that whosoever believes in him would, would not perish but have everlasting life. See, y'all should be up here teaching this. Would not perish but have everlasting life, right? So, listen, I tell people all the time, God's love. And Miss Mary, where are you at? When you're doing evangelism, you and the evangelism team, you need to hear this. So when you're sharing with people and they're questioning God's love, God showed his love already when he gave Jesus his death, burial, and resurrection. If the Father did nothing else for us ever but that, it would have been enough. Amen? Isn't there a Hebrew song like that? Dayenu? It would have been enough. Amen? <laughs> right? It would have been enough. That's God's love. So God already proved his love. Well, God, if you really love me, you need to prove it. Well, he's already proven it. But he continues to show his love even over and above that. That's pretty amazing once you get that stuck in your heart. Amen? I think about this stuff all the time because it just keeps you really grateful. How many of you know when you're not grateful, what happens in your life? You get down, Tony said. What else? Rich, huh? Spirit starts dying. What else? What happens when you're not grateful in your life? Stay angry. Say it again, Tony. You complain. Listen, my ancestors, God bless them. God save them. 
we were some complaining, whining folks coming out of the land of Egypt. Amen. <laughs> but you know what happens? Believers get caught up in that same thing because of ingratitude. So when you're not grateful in your life, you find yourself, you start complaining to God all the time or complaining to other people about stuff. Listen, I've complained about stuff. You, am I the only one? Y'all ever complained about anything? So you reverse that and you start being grateful in your life instead of complaining. Amen? Because how many of you know there's a lot of people worse off than you are in whatever it is you're complaining about? Am I right, Miss Linda? All right. Good teaching, Pastor. Let's go on. <laughs> Tim? Good, brother. Six. Participation in divine life. Charisse allows us to participate in the divine life, giving us access to God's own righteousness, wisdom, and power. How many of you need access to God's righteousness? What does his righteousness do for us? Makes us right. Amen. I love that. Makes us right. What else? Huh? clean, right? We said, I call it the great exchange, amen? The great exchange is that the Lord Jesus Christ, by his grace and by the power of his Holy Spirit, took my unrighteousness and gave me his righteousness. Exchanged it. Do you see that? Exchanged it. Why are so many believers still walking in unrighteousness? Well, a lot of them, A, don't realize that Jesus really did take that righteousness from them unrighteousness, excuse me, but not only did Jesus take unrighteousness from them, but what did he give back? His righteousness. How do I know that? The Bible tells us, Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. If you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart, God's raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. That's verse 9, verse 10, for what? With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With the heart, believing is made unto what? Everybody say Righteousness made unto righteousness. So when you got saved and your heart believed in the resurrection of Jesus, righteousness came into your life. Not because you earned it. Jesus paid the price for that. Amen? So then why are we still walking oftentimes in unrighteousness? It's because we've failed to receive his righteousness and we failed to re realize that he has taken our unrighteousness from us. You have to allow the exchange. Amen? Everybody understand it? Who raised their hand? Isla. Amen. That's right. Complaining, I tell folks, and I tell myself, when I get caught up complaining sometimes, I'll use myself as an example. I say, self, remember, that's what caused your ancestors to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. Amen? <laughs> and so, uh, <clears throat> listen, none of us are perfect. But all this is about making us walk closer with Abba, closer with Heavenly Father, and have a deeper relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? So that you and I can reflect more of him to the world. And the world needs the reflection of Jesus. Amen? Needs the reflection of Jesus. Now, as much as ever. Amen? All right, Tim. Where are we at, brother? Oh, so that was righteousness. The next part we said is giving us access to God's own wisdom. How many of you need God's wisdom? How many of you try to do life through uh, or try to do life yourself? Your own strength, your own wisdom, your own power. We've all done that at times, right? What's it mean to lean on God's wisdom? I'll tell you what it means to me is every aspect of my life, I ask for his wisdom and his help. Even in natural things, when I'm working on my little inventions, my little projects for my company, um, I'm praying, asking the Holy Spirit to give me wisdom all the time. It doesn't have to be just spiritual things. How many of you know that Heavenly Father created all the universe? And it's pretty magnificent. You know, I heard something this week. I thought it was pretty good. It said, uh, those who are on the outskirts of science think that science disproved God, but those who really understand science understand and see the magnificence of God. 
and it couldn't be further from the truth. I mean, it was just so unbelievably true that the deeper you go into the creation of God, both on a grand scale like the universe, pretty amazing, and then the quantum scale, you see the hand of God in everything. The hand of God in everything. It's amazing. Uh, Samuel back there, Samuel Massey, has been going through these character sketches that I went through as a kid. And uh, they teach the elements of uh, different birds, different animals, God's creation, does a character sketch and then compares it to a biblical character sketch. And one of the things, and you can ask him, he'll tell you, one of the things you see is how extraordinarily creative and detailed Heavenly Father was in every piece of creation. It's unbelievable. Amen? And that's not even the microscopic level. That's just birds and animals, right? <clears throat> Pretty amazing. So we need, I say all that to say we need God's wisdom, and he is able to give his wisdom. What's it say in James chapter 3, somebody, about the wisdom of God? If anyone lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who will give to all men liberally and withhold it not. Amen? Huh? That is what you said. Good job, Miss Connie. Gold star. Gold star. Give me a gold star. I love me some Miss Connie. So, <laughs> if any of you lack wisdom, which is at least once or twice should be in our life every day, amen, ask God, he'll help you. How many of you ever get caught in a situation where you don't know exactly how to handle all the details, right? Ask God. Family situations all the time, right? Those of you with young children, those of you with grown children, children's situations all the time, ask God. Amen. He gives wisdom. And that goes back to what Pastor Tom was saying. That's part of an intimate relationship with the Father, where you're talking to him all the time about the things happening in your life. You need righteousness. You understand, well, you've given me righteousness. I need to accept it and walk in it. You need wisdom. Well, let me ask you, Father, for wisdom in this area. And what's the last part of that after wisdom? It says what? Power. Power. Now, the word power in the Greek, not here, I just wrote power in English, but the word I was thinking of when I wrote this was dunamis, the explosive power of God, amen? The explosive power of God. Now, I want to share a testimony with you, and Miss Josie, <clears throat> I don't want to put you on the spot, so I can share your testimony, or would you like to share your testimony with them, what happened to you last Saturday? Then let me grab a let me grab a microphone. Tim, come bring the microphone to her. You got young legs, young man. <laughs> let you do all that walking. <laughs> I want you all to hear this. This was last Saturday. Okay. Oh. Talk into the mic so they can hear you. Okay. Is that all right? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. Oh, I've never done this, so I don't know. You do anyway, fine. I don't know. I'm sure people have seen me hobble and have a difficult time walking, my neck being crooked, and anyway, I was not expecting them to do the healing. They did, and they asked, and it, I was glad to receive, and the Lord, uh, I'm walking better. I don't have any pain in my foot, my neck, I don't have as much pain, not perfect, but it's getting there, you know, and I thank God, because one of the ladies, I think it was uh, Nancy Young, t told me I need to thank God for healing. Amen. And to keep thanking, and now this is all new to me, I've never been in a church on healing and uh, in faith, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. But I'm learning, and I love it. Amen. Uh, Amen. Thank you, Josie. That was beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. <clears throat> so, you know, it was funny because last Saturday after the conference, I saw her. My first thought was, I don't remember her looking that tall. 
honestly, I thought that. And then she was just beaming from ear to ear, and she walked up to me. She said, you know, she's real quiet-spoken. She said, Pastor, God healed me. And so I was so excited. And, uh, and that wasn't the only miracle that the Lord did last weekend. We had another, um, I won't give the details of who, but there was a young lady who was here. And uh, <clears throat> Pastor Tim, Pastor Tom, excuse me, had a word of prophecy for her and just whispered in her ear and said something like, um, you know, everybody tells you that you're a terrible mom and God says you're not a terrible mom. And he didn't know that. I mean, it was just the Holy Spirit. She just broke down because that's what everybody always says to her. And it was so encouraging to her to know that God's for her. Amen. For her. And so it was a beautiful moment, beautiful moment. So I'm sharing that with you to give glory to God and to encourage you that the Lord's moving. He's doing something. Amen. And so we're rejoicing with Miss Josie. We're going to continue to pray for uh, just a continued grace in your life. Amen. Very excited. You did a great job sharing that, Miss Josie. Getting bold. Hallelujah. All right. Awesome, guys. We got eight more minutes. Let's keep going. Uh, go ahead and read bullet point A for us, Brother Tim. Gaining a revelation of how we can share in his life, extended through his grace, should free us from living as paupers instead of walking in the kingdom power extended by the king to become fully his sons and daughters. Now, listen, my pastor friends that I pray with on Wednesdays, we talk about this all the time. If God's people in the body of Christ, just in America, let's say, would really begin to realize how God sees them and all that the Lord has done on their behalf through Jesus Christ and through the power of his Holy Spirit, we wouldn't be walking around with our hang heads hung down low, defeated by the world, defeated by the devil every day. We'd be walking in the power, the presence, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, bringing in power the good news of Jesus Christ to those around us. Amen. That's my goal as a pastor, is to see you guys walking in the power and presence of the Lord. So Josie, what she experienced in her life, can now take that testimony, can take that and share it with others. Maybe she'll run across somebody in her business who is suffering in some way. She'll be able to bring her story, and each of us have a story, amen, and bring her story to someone else. And that's a beautiful thing, amen, beautiful thing. So that's what I meant when I wrote that. Um, listen, there are no paupers in the kingdom of God. I don't care if you live in a cardboard house in a third world country. If you are born again, blood washed, filled with the Holy Spirit believer in Jesus, you're a child or a daughter of the king. Amen. And one day, well, I'm just going to leave you with this thought. So the Bible says that ear has not heard, eye has not seen the things that God has in store for who? For those who love him. Amen. So listen, one day the afflictions that you go through in this life will seem so petty in comparison to the glory that God will reveal to each and every one of us in the life to come. So petty, amen? I imagine myself thinking, Bruce, how in the world did you get so worked up over this, this, or this in your life? In comparison to what God has, it's absolutely meaningless. Amen? Meaningless. So how does that help us now? Well, it helps us now, I think, if we realize that there is an eternal focus to our life. Amen? We keep our eyes fixed on the kingdom of God. There is a real kingdom that's coming. Someone say amen. Jesus really is coming back to establish his kingdom on this earth. And in spite of all the best efforts of fallen man or of Satan or of his demonic hordes, God's will will be done. And you and I get to participate in that. Why? Because of his grace. His love that he's given to us through Jesus. Amen? Are you blessed? You encouraged? Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. 
<clears throat> Pastor Carl, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you to just bless God's people this morning and bless us out for our break time, if you would, brother. 